it's really nice. Try one of the other ones. That's, that's crazy. It's got some deformation on the top. Right. That's really interesting. So 1890 what again? 1897. 1897. This one, this uh, one in the middle. That's 1921. Passed away 15, 18 months after that was made. There were 28 guitars made and numbered after this one, but and then he passed away. 100th anniversary is October wow. 31st this year. When What's he passed away, so wow. I'm hoping to do a. Wow, it's really interesting. Commemoration day thing. What's What's the wood on this one? Brazilian rose Brazilian, right? Sides, spruce top. Yeah, it got uh, restored in 1954 by Paris Benchetti. In 1954? Yeah, all the tracks were repaired. Yeah. played a guitar with one of these in here. I've got two other guitars with Tornaboses. I got a Antonio de Luca Ramirez from 1913 with a Tornabos and a Jose Saratosa from 1914 with a Tornabos. So this one's 1907? 1907. And then this Brazil was Brazilian. This eight guitars after Targa's last Enrique Garcia, his second Enrique Garcia. So that's Brazilian and, and spruce. The first guitar that you played, the maple one, yeah. that was made the year that Enrique restored uh, Tarraga's tourist guitar that got yeah. damaged.
sounds like it sounds like some of my gigs. <laughs> Really? Wow. Many maple guitars that come in. Like this. I got I three or four others. Really? Yeah, because I don't see many maple ones. Yeah. At all. They were real popular in the 19th century. Really. I really like that maple one. It's really nice. Still have my ruck. I just uh, sold one a month ago. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. What did What did you have in? I was an '85 Brazilian in cedar. Mm -hmm. Wow, very nice. Yeah, mine is uh, my ruck is a copy, I think, of Barreco's guitar, but it was originally left-handed. Oh okay. And someone swapped it around, so I was told that um, the reason they know it was left-handed because he he inserts like a some little tone bar or something on the inside. To control the bass, so now it's on the opposite side of the soundboard. But it sounds fine it to me. Works. <laughs> it still works. Yeah, I, I made enough for that 15 years ago. My other shop. Really? Really? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right. That's right, that was a long time ago. It still sounds great. It's, it's a great guitar. The only thing is that the, the finish freaks me out a little bit because it turns white like during the summer from practicing, so like the back. Oh yeah, well the you heat. can sweat on it 30 minutes in August, <laughs> yeah. and then you can take it to a little theater that doesn't doll up the French ball. Wow. So where, where did you get these from? Um, private parties. This one I bought from Luigi Atademo. Maple back and sides. It's got nine fan braces. Jacques Vicente restored it in 2008. Yeah. Uh, this was bought from Bev Mayer's shop in New York.
very clear sounding. Yeah. And this one's a little more mellow. Sedar Villietti, yeah. and I gave him credit on 17 yeah. pages of my book yeah. for uh, entries that were taken from his Origen de mm -hmm. Historia de la Guitarra, so this published one, in 73. This one looks like it has new tuners on it. Yeah, I had to uh, put new tuners on it. It had junk. 70s tuners yeah. with no black anodized gear or anything. These, these are really nice. What are, what are these and tuners? it was brought to the United States and mm -hmm. I was tuning it at 4 o'clock in the morning and, and the D-string, the, the thumb piece broke and I said, well, I'm going to put new gears on it. Right. Yeah, this one has a little bit of a fatter sound. What tuners are these that you own? Um, I don't know, they almost look like Fustero tuners as far as the engravings. Yeah. I took them off a of Flamenco I imported in 2017, and I put these other gears that weighed five grams more on the Flamenco. Wow, super cool. Thanks, Randy. That's a lot of history right there. Yeah, the 1907 on the right, uh, that belonged to a family that bought it from Garcia directly. The other two had subsequent owners before they came back to my hands. the original tuners, you think? Uh, Maybe? Yeah. Could be, huh? They look pretty old. I've never seen any like this before. Yeah, that's got the the pipa. Uh, this guy in 1905 invented Oh, that yeah, thing yeah, yeah. The, I didn't even notice that yeah, before. Yeah, and it just allows you to hook up the string on there without having to put it through a hole. And it's, it's, so it's almost like a flamenco uh, peg thing. Well, flamenco peg's got a hole, but so you these, just wrap it around it. Oh, I see. And then start yeah. Start tuning it up. That's interesting. Yeah, that's really unique. I've never seen that before. Yeah. So um, there is like a oh, there's something. Oh, there's a hole, but some of them are filled with something, right? It's like a little pin or. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, so they're called pips. Pips. Pips, these things. Was that uh, common at that time? Or, uh... Well, they weren't invented until 1905. Yeah. So you find these on Garcia guitars, Francisco Simplicio guitars. So how much 
much do you think the tornavas changes the tone? Actually played one of these before. Or seen seen one, seen one installed. So does does this actually come out? Can you can you pull that? Uh, out? not easily. So I imagine to get into work on the guitar, you'd have to pull it out you somehow. You gotta pull the back off and then remove it carefully. Wow! So you'd have to take the back off. Yeah, <laughs> my buddy Richard Bernay said some people have tried to take them out. Uh, in the wrong manner and have destroyed the rosettes. Oh, wow. Right, right. It's terrible. So so it's installed in there. Is it like glued in? It has yeah, it's inside. attached pretty yeah. stiffly. It doesn't vibrate or anything to the, the massive sounds you can bring out of it. Yeah. Oh, that's metal too, right? Yeah, it's brass. Brazilian too. Yeah, Emilio Pujol owned two in 1902 and in 1905. Domingo Pratt owned three, the guy that wrote the DC Nada de Quita de Heroes. So what are these gentlemen? Julio Segrero yeah. owned one. Yeah. There's a YouTube video where you can hear him playing mm -hmm. it. He passed away in 1943. So how much are these running on the market like? That one I got priced at fifty-five thousand. Fifty-five. The nineteen twenty-one at sixty thousand. The nine, the eighteen ninety-seven at sixty-five thousand. There are two other Garcias available in the United States. One is 60,000, the other is 65,000. I remember when I was in college, I was looking for a guitar, and, you know, Brahm was helping me out. And he's, uh, he said, oh, I got a guitar for you. It's coming from Japan or something like that. I was like, oh, really? How much? He's like, oh, it's about 50,000. I'm like, great. I'm just going to go to the, <laughs> I'll just go write a check. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. This is great. These are beautiful. 
Yeah, people were asking, said, well, how many Garcias are you going to collect? I said, two more, and I got a basketball team. <laughs> Do you have other Garcias, too, or just these three for now? No, I got three, that's it. Yeah. Until somebody comes along and destroys my display. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, this has been yeah. Danny Uritu, one of my old-time customers, playing for you today. We're going to go get some sheet music. <laughs>